Welcome to the Grok Shop. In this video, I'm going to show how to repair a Honda Element aux input jack. Of course, if you prefer, you can replace the aux input jack um, with a new one, uh, but it's not needed really, um, and I'll show why here in a minute. And you also need to have this tool, which I'll share a link to below. Okay, now before starting, make sure your car ignition is completely off. You don't want any power to the socket. Okay, first up, we want to drop the glove box. To do that, you need to get the door stop tabs off. And um, you can do that with a screwdriver placed right there by gently prying. Or you can also squeeze with some needle nose pliers on these uh, tabs here. Um, or you can do a little bit of both, but of course, it's plastic, so be careful either way. Once you got it popped loose, just push the glove box forward a little and then pull the stops out. With both stoppers out, uh, just let the glove box drop to the floor. There's no need really to remove the glove box completely unless you feel like it's in your way. If so, you can just remove those two screws at the bottom there. Behind the glove box, you can see the cabin air filter there. And then up above there, um, between the big metal bar and that plastic is where you actually have to get your fingers in order to push this thing from behind, either the aux jack or the accessory jack. Now, unfortunately, in classic Honda Element fashion, they didn't design this um, to be very maintenance friendly. But I'll share a few tricks to help with that. Okay, to get your tool in, you want to kind of put it at an angle and get one hole started and then sort of pry it over and get the other hole going. So it should seat in both of those holes really well. And then you just need to give it a pretty good jiggle and pull. Uh, you don't want to go too crazy, but just enough to get the metal part started to separate from the plastic area. You can see I got a little gap just big enough to get the tip of my screwdriver in. What I figured out was you can only really get about an eighth to a quarter inch out uh, of separation. And once you have that much, you can just stick something in between the metal and the plastic to sort of maintain that gap. And then you want to go ahead and remove the tool. And if it doesn't come out easy, you can use another screwdriver to kind of pry one side loose. It's what I'm going to do right here. Yeah, this thing is incredibly sealed tight. It's tighter than a bank vault. I mean, I spent quite a bit of time, I edited this video down, trying to pry a little and not damage the plastic, um, but it didn't really budge much. You might get just a tiny bit of movement, but before long, uh, you just end up going back to needle nose and pliers to, uh, to pull it all the way out, which is what I'm gonna do here. So yeah, now you can see the little flange on the aux jack, which is pinned in by the accessory socket. And if you didn't have that, um, I guess you could go straight to the aux jack, but again, not really designed uh, very well with maintenance in mind. Okay, now that that ordeal is over, it's time for the next ordeal. Um, so behind the aux jack are these two tabs, one on each side, and you can easily get to the one on the uh, accessory socket side by sticking your finger in that open hole, but of course you can't get to the other one. So I decided to use the end of this tool to try to reach and push that tab in from below, and that's where the fun starts. Now what you need to do is create a little reverse pressure, in other words, uh, create a pulling force on the whole jack and you could do that by hand but I just had shoulder surgery so I'm using um, this bungee cord so I can hold my hand closer in uh, but you need to have that pull action going so that um, while you're poking around in there it's going to take a little time to find that tab 
And once you find it, if you don't have anything pulling, um, it's not going to come out. So you got to have both forces going and she'll pop right out. Of course, it goes without saying, it's plastic. Don't overdo it. Okay, once you freed up the jack, you just put a little pressure on this flange part of the wiring harness and free it up. Okay, now we need to open up the jack body and um, I found the best way to do it is to get a flat head that fits almost perfectly into these little square detents and very gently pry it because the plastic on there is super thin. I mean, it's got to be like a sixteenth of an inch. It's good quality plastic, but it'll, you can see you could very easily break it. So very, very slowly and carefully pushing up on the edge while you pry should pop free pretty easy. Rinse and repeat for the other side and you're good to go. So why does this thing fail, right? Um, I mean, I'm not totally sure, but my theory is that the detect uh, pin no longer sends a valid signal, so the ability of this jack to detect when you plug uh, your cable into the aux jack fails. And uh, pretty much that would allow you to, say if you're listening to the radio or something else, it will automatically switch to your aux input. So that no longer works. It basically keeps the aux shut off. Um, so to work around that, we can um, pull the detection pin low and to do that I'm going to solder um, the detect uh, to the ground and I'll show how to do that here. Now once you modify the circuit like this um, it'll no longer automatically switch for you. You just manually switch it to aux or radio as if um, it didn't have the automatic detection capability. Um, if you want to have that, if it, that's important to you for some reason, um, then just get a new one. Go to your Honda parts supplier and get you a new um, aux port. And um, I don't think they're that expensive, but honestly, that feature didn't really add that much value to make it worthwhile to me to get a new part. So that's the reason for the workaround. By the way, for your genuine Honda parts, if you've ever used the eStore.honda.com, um, I highly recommend that. I think it's um, it's a pretty good discount off of what the dealership will be able to sell you directly, like about 30% cheaper or something. And um, the dealership, your local guy can still get credit and uh, you save some bucks and they ship it pretty fast to the local dealer because I guess they can source it from other dealerships or whatnot. Um, so like it's a pretty good system um, I'll put a I'll put a link to that below in case you decide to buy a new aux jack so yeah just assemble it and uh, the reverse order that you took it apart there Okay, now I can uh, plug it back in to the wiring harness. Everything's keyed so you can't really get it backwards or anything. Okay, when you go to reassemble your uh, accessory socket, watch out for the little key there. Make sure you get that uh, detent into that little keyhole, get those aligned, and mash it back together. It's tight, man, I'm telling you, it's tight. 
Okay, notice here I got my thumb in the socket. You know, don't do that if your ignition's turned on and you don't have your battery disconnected. Uh, you can get a pretty good shock there. Don't do that. But yeah, I got I my car's uh, ignition is off when I did all this, so no big deal. Okay, if you're having any trouble getting your uh, 12 volt accessory socket plugged back in, raise up that aux port cover uh, if it's not already open. Seems like it does have ability to interfere with that um, accessory socket going back in. There we go. That's how it's done. Thanks for watching.